Hey, what's up, everybody? And welcome to Everything You Love, episode 31. I'm Rob Arnold. Thanks for tuning in. Today's episode, gonna be answering some questions, showing you some cool stuff. Kinda the usual for when I don't have a guest on here. Oh, if you're curious, that song you heard at the beginning, maybe you've heard it a million times before, is it's, it's a tune I've been using in my intros for a long time, but I decided to play the riff from it today. It is a song called The Next Great Divide from my band, The Elite. If you'd like to learn more about it, I'll leave you a link to the YouTube video. Uh, the song playthrough, not playthrough, but like listen along, you know, uh, that you can check out. I'll leave that in a link in the description below. But let's jump right into some questions here, right? Why not? First one we got from Rami. What's up, Rami? Was wondering, could you do an episode on the new Pass Out of Existence 20th Anniversary Edition? Would it be cool to hear what you think about the new 2021 remix songs? Also, I don't think you've ever talked about the track without moral restraint. Any other cool facts about the album would be cool. Yeah, Rami, so I'm super glad that Pass Out of Existence, my band Kamira's debut full length came out 20 years ago and to celebrate the uh, the anniversary of that, we reissued it on vinyl with a bunch of bonus material and I'm glad that those have finally started arriving at people's doorsteps, it's crazy. Uh, I checked back and I made this video here showing off uh, you know, what was gonna, that it was gonna be available and stuff like that a year ago, 11 months to be exact. But the fact that it's taken this long for them to come out is just crazy. But uh, I guess that's the way the world is right now. But I got my copy. It's definitely cool. There's a lot of cool stuff on there. Uh, the remixes. So I'm super stoked on the remixes. Three songs we did for that. Um, a guy named Aaron Shaparian. Uh, who works with Iron Audio, that's his company, Iron Audio. You've heard me mention him on the channel maybe in the past because I dug his work the moment I heard it. He's doing killer stuff. He's like a ghostwriter, I think is his primary thing. Does also like mixing, production, tutorials, basically anything you need. So hit him up, I'll leave a link to his Instagram where you can hit him up below if you want some stuff done, like you're a singer, you just want some songs written for you. That's exactly what he does. And if you check out his page, you'll hear it. His stuff is just absolutely crushing. So anyways, uh, when I heard that maybe we were gonna do some remixes, I got him involved right away. He did a test mix. I showed it to Mark Hunter, Camara Singer. He was totally on board. The label liked it. So we had him do a couple more songs and they turned out great. Uh, I never talked about the track Without Moral Restraint, which is a B-side, like a bonus track uh, for Pass Out of Existence, and I couldn't even remember what that sounded like. I couldn't remember how it went, so I had to check that out, and man, it actually brought back a lot of great memories for me because that's a tune we wrote super early on that we would play live all the time. And uh, just brought back those memories. It also brought back the memories of writing that in the rehearsal room, and those were in the days where we would just jam every single note, every single riff, together as a band in the in, in the room and put it together uh, nobody was like bringing in songs from home that everyone would learn like the technology for that like wasn't really around yet especially as the way in the way it is now but there was an energy that came from building songs together like that I really like Mark's vocal style in this songs and a, and a lot of the stuff he was doing in that era which really only existed in that era kind of like the I don't know if I'd call it like rappier more like uh, subdued kind of kind of verses and then you'd get powerful in in the choruses not really singing but just more of like this this different style that really only existed uh in that early era but that was really cool so it was good to hear that song again uh, yeah next one rob if you were called to fill in guitar for a big metal band would you take it would you play a one-off show or would you go on tour with that band to fill in so Scotty, uh, I would definitely want to do a tour. And that's because when you fill in for a band, you have to learn all their material generally in a really short amount of time. Kind of like Mark just did for Lamb of God where he went and uh, filled in for Randy uh, in Michigan there. I don't know, a month ago now, I just did an interview with him. I'll link that for you up here. If you'd like to check that out if you haven't seen it, but Mark had to scramble. He had like, you know, just over a day's notice to learn a whole set's worth of songs and that's tough so if you have a whole tour think by show 10 show 12 you're in the groove you know you're, you've worked out all the beginning jitters and nerves you know the material you know your cues where you're supposed to be how the day is going to run all that kind of stuff so it is just really a luxury to have a tour to be a filling guy because you can just really get comfortable and then it's either over after that or you continue on whatever i'm sure mark would have liked more time to, uh, to do that obviously we're all glad randy you know only missed a couple a couple of shows and, and wasn't that sick um so at any rate uh but then 
it would have to be the right band and the right scenario for sure. It'd have to be music that I love and like a, a good lucrative uh, opportunity, you know, to just uproot everything that I go on, got going on here to go do it. But yes, I miss the stage. I miss the touring environment. I miss that kind of stuff. And, and I would love to do it again, but the music would have to be just right because I'm um, honestly, you guys probably wouldn't have thought this of me, but I'm not a guy that likes playing other people's material. I don't like doing cover songs. Uh, I had that uh, stint, a short stint with Six Feet Under back in 2011, um, where I wrote and toured with those, and recorded an album and toured with those guys, the Undead record. Now, when those guys first hit me up, uh, Chris Barnes, he, you know, he uh, he just said, "Hey, would you like to collaborate on some material, do a record together and stuff?" And I was like, "For sure." Uh, we started doing that, and then a few months into it, just out of the blue, um, he hit me up and was like, "Hey, what would you think about, you know, like joining the band and?" coming on tour, doing some shows, and I was like... Okay. So it was just kind of really unexpected, uh, and I'm glad I did it, and I loved playing that material, and it turned out to be really cool. Unfortunately, that whole thing was kind of when my just touring world was coming to an end for me, and that included Six Feet Under, Kamira, everything, and I just got off the road indefinitely. So, uh, uh, but again, I really enjoyed playing that material, and if I were to do something in the future, it'd have to be stuff that I was really into, and just a great opportunity that I, I couldn't pass up. Oh, this was a funny one here. It's not really a question, but uh, from a guy named JT's Gear Garage. JT uh, comments a lot. Good dude, but check this out. He says, I tech for George Lynch one day, and all I knew how to do was plug in the amp and tube guitars. Blah, blah, blah. So he didn't really know what he was doing. Uh, for those of you that don't know, George Lynch is a legend. Uh, he played with with Dokken. I've got one of his custom guitars hanging right there on the wall. I have to admit, though, I'm not super familiar with, with George's material or Dokken or anything. I just happen to love that guitar and know that he's uh, just a legend and a classic guitarist in the scene. Um, but anyways, um, to kind of give a little backstory of what JT might be talking about here is when Camaro would tour, we had our crew and generally you know, you want to have the, you don't want a lot of turnaround in the crew. You want guys to get to know the camp, get to know how you want things, how everything's done and to be with you for a long time. And that, that's the hope that you can get a guitar tech and a drum tech and a sound engineer that are going to be with you for a long time. Generally, at least for an album cycle, that's many tours for a specific album. Uh, and we would have that, but every once in a while, We'd go do some one-off show like in in London or something like that. And rather than assembling the whole crew and flying guys into Cleveland just to fly over with you and, and all that kind of stuff, you'd have like an in-house crew there ready for you. The production company that was in charge of putting on that show or festival would have their guys. Okay, we have a sound, a sound guy you can use and um, uh, guitar techs and drum techs and stuff like that. And we would agree to that. And we'd go in and it just wouldn't be the same because it's not your crew. They don't know your setups, in what order you like your guitars, what the tuning changes are gonna be, how the set's supposed to go, how you like to pay stuff out. Everything down to where you want your drink to be sitting on your, on your gear so you can take a drink in between songs, where your set list is gonna be on the stage. There's just so many little things. Um, but, but the guys were always pro and it was cool, but it'd just be a fill-in experience. So back to JT here. Uh, he obviously somehow fell into a situation where he was that that day crew guy for George Lynch. And he says, all I knew how to do was plug in the amp and tube guitar. So I replied, huh, I'll bet George loved that sarcastically, you know, especially when you offered to tube his guitars. <laughs> so anyways, we had a laugh. JT uh, got back to me on that. And this was on a guitar maintenance video that he commented on. So just, just a funny thing. Cheers, JT. Oh, this thing. So I wanted to point this out and uh, make light of it here. A lot of you guys saw from a few videos ago of mine um, that all of a sudden this random dude just started texting that they had won a congratulations. It says, congratulations, you have been selected among our shortlist winners from our previous giveaway. Contact the number above. And their like username or screen name is the number. So unsuspecting victims of this, you know, just good people are taken advantage of from these scammers that do this sort of thing. And you generally see this sort of thing on like finance channels and bigger channels where scammers will try to get in there and just take advantage of people by saying, call this number and we have a prize for you. You won this or that or whatever. I never thought it would happen to me with, you know, my small channel doing guitar stuff or whatever, but it did. And a lot of people started pointing this out to me and I started seeing them and we start, I started removing them, but this scammer took advantage of some people. And I, I 
ended up putting up a post like, hey, if you see this, just ignore it. It's just a scammer. But he got at least one guy. We'll call this guy Jed. Jed reached out to me and said, hey, this person took advantage of me. I ended up sending him money and stuff. And I'm like, sending him money? Really? Like, like, tell me the story. So Jed got in touch with me. Instagram sent me a screenshot of the entire conversation with this scammer. So it started off like this. It's pretty fascinating. Uh, Jed sent a message to this number saying, hey, uh, just reaching out here because you said that I had won something. You know, I'm just uh, checking in with that. The scammer's like, oh, great. Um, yeah, you've won and we'll, we need to arrange getting you your prize. Jed replies, great, sounds good. Then the scammer's like, we just need to know what shipping option you'd like and you need to just pay for the shipping and everything else is cool. And then he laid out three shipping options and it looked kind of le legit, like FedEx, overnight, $150, UPS, $135, blah, blah, blah. And there was just different options. And Jed replies back, oh, uh, I didn't realize I was going to be responsible for having to you know, pay for shipping this. What is it? What did I win? And then the scammer like just avoids these questions. Uh, obviously, you know, he's done this a lot and knows how to dance around this stuff. So he avoids it and gets to the point where he's at, get, they're exchanging like PayPal or Venmo details. And Jed ends up sending this guy like 135 or 150 bucks to pay for shipping. And then after that, Jed kind of realizes that the whole thing seems fishy and says something. The guy just kind of laughs it off and kept his money and Jed got screwed. So just really unfortunate that this stuff is going around. You hear about it. You just got to be careful. Know that it's just when you see something like this, it's probably not legit and ask before, uh, certainly. And don't let yourself get taken advantage of. But uh, anyways, I wanted to make it right for Jed. I mean, certainly this wasn't my fault. I had nothing to do with that. There's nothing I can do about these scammers and hackers, you know, on YouTube. Could have happened to anybody on anybody's channel, to any, you know, audience member, whatever. But I wanted to be cool and make it right for Jed. So I saw his his information, his address in these screenshots he had sent me. And I sent him a little, you know, Rob Arnold World, uh, Camira, just care package out of the blue, just a surprise. Fortunately, I haven't heard anything from Jed. You know, I don't know if it arrived. I didn't need a thank you or anything, but, uh, you know, it would have been nice to know that he received it. This is probably like a month ago now or whatever. So anyways, Jed, if you're watching, let me know, man. Or go check your mailbox. Whatever comes first, you know. Here we go with one from Alex Pinty, or maybe Pintia. Hi, Rob. I want to get into Chimera. What should I start with? Cool guitar. Well, thanks, Alex. And I love hearing that. I'd love for you to get into Chimera, too. If you haven't already, um, so check this out. Uh, you know, our albums are kind of different. We have five, six, seven of them, something like that. 2005's Chimera is my particular favorite. It's just got a lot of depth to it. If you're into that, um, the compositions are, are pretty just long and, and progressive in a certain sense. The opening track on that album, Nothing Remains, uh, was our lead off single for that. And a lot of people say there's like this midpoint Middle Eastern, like Egyptian sounding part that, that really hooked them in and, and made them a fan when either they saw that live or heard it for the first time. So maybe that would have the same effect on you. I'm not sure, but I would recommend checking that record out. But at the same time, our album before that, 2003's Impossibility of Reason is our most popular record. And it has the biggest like anthems on it. Songs like Pure Hatred, Power Trip, um, The Dehumanizing Process, Implements of Destruction, a big instrumental a lot of people like. So you could check those out, but I thought what would be best is actually for people here, the people watching this who, you know, most of you, I'm sure, are Chimera fans, leave a comment for Alex. Let him know what you recommend, what how you got into us, or what you would recommend that somebody for the first time check out first, what rabbit hole they should go down. Feel free to leave a Spotify link or YouTube link to a video uh, to your favorite stuff what you think somebody should hear first. I'd be interested to read that as well. And maybe there are other people like Alex as well in the community here who aren't aware of Chimera. And if you're not, also check out The Elite that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so that's an album that I did in 2018 after my time in Chimera. Um, with now Camera drummer uh, Austin Diamond and uh, my boy TJ Frost from some uh, Buffalo death metal bands back in the day and STEM. I don't know if you heard of them. So just cool stuff. I got lots of stuff for you to check out. And I know I keep saying this, but I got a couple sweet albums in the pipeline too that are eventually going to hit here. And I can't wait for you all to check that out. Okay, so here's something I wanted you guys to check out. A lot of people have seen me using these DR strings, these DR high beams, and they've been asking about them. You see them in my maintenance videos and things like that. Um, and I really like these strings. 
And unfortunately, it's just a custom set made for me, not a signature series set that you can buy, but it's just a custom set that's made for me. I was introduced to DR in 2017 by Camera bassist Jim LaMarca. Uh, we had always used Dean Markley Blue Steel for a long time, and I loved a, a, a certain pack, their mediums that uh, had these exact gauges. But uh, after the band kind of folded, that endorsement went away, our rep no longer works there, and that medium set of Blue Steels is getting harder and harder to find. They still exist somewhere, but I have a feeling they're older, like been in a batch or some some box in some warehouse for a long time, and they do oxidize. Um, so I don't know that they're making fresh sets of them. It doesn't seem like DR's or Dean Markley's out there promoting, anything like that. So anyways, I was glad to come in, to come in touch with, uh, with DR, who made me this custom set just to try out. I love them, they sound great, they feel great and they have these exact gauges, which in this case is an 11, 13, 20 wound, 30, 42, 52. I use this for all my stuff, specifically drop C, and then I just throw a 60 on there uh, for my seven strings on top of all these. Uh, so at any rate, people have been asking how they can get these, and a fellow YouTuber here, uh, a guy named, I don't know, Sfeetan, um, said that he reached out to DR and got this message back from them. Thanks for your email. We have an answer for you on this. The set that Rob orders from us is a custom set made just for him. We do not sell the set as a standard electric set of ours. However, the set can be special ordered from your favorite store or online service by using the special part number, blah, blah, blah. If that set comes through on one of our store POs, which I'm guessing is a purchase order, we'll know what to make for you. Hope that helps some, the DR staff. So then I had some other guys that asked me about it and I pointed them in this direction and it worked for them. One guy specifically I know contacted Sweetwater per my advice, uh, sweetwater.com and just either an email or a phone call, that's all you gotta do and just copy and paste this information and say, I'd like to get X amount of sets um, with this particular special part number and they made it happen for them. You could do it through Toman or your local guitar store, guitar center, whatever. I'm sure if you just take this part number and they happen to be a DR dealer, then you could just make it happen if you'd like to get this set of strings. I get nothing from them. I get no kickback, anything like that. I'm promoting them because I love the strings and I'd like you to have them too if you so desire. So check those out if you're interested. Copy down that part number, take a screenshot, whatever you like to do, and uh, good luck. Let me know if you get them. I'd be interested. So that said, uh, I have something I want to show you, something cool. I have been collecting some various drumsticks from my favorite bands or guys from Camira, whatever, uh, since the beginning, uh, for years now, as you'll see in a moment here. And they've just been stashed away in my memorabilia boxes back in a storage place. And I've, I've always wanted to display them, but I never have. And I finally just got this uh, cool little stick holder, just something simple from Amazon. And I uh, have displayed the sticks here. So I uh, thought I'd show them to you. Let's go take a look. All right, so this is my little drumstick collection here. Just kind of go from the top. And uh, this first one is a Vader, I think a 2B, I don't know, but that's Andals Herrick, 667. That was his old kind of thing he'd do, you know, one, I forget what he'd say, one greater than Satan or something like that. But uh, an original Andals, Camira signature stick there. Very cool. And then this one, it's just one of these Easton heads. He liked these. This isn't like an actual signature stick, but that is his signature. And the this is one of the drumsticks that he used on my solo record that is yet to be released. It is upcoming, but I saved one from that session. But are you, are you guys familiar with these? These, are, these Easton heads, like kind of a plastic tip. Really cool, really cool sticks. I hope they're still making them. Please get out of my way here. All right, then these, I got two sets of these. These are rare. Ricky Evanson Camira um, signature Vic Firths. Really cool there. Chaos logo, the Ricky signature. Stoked to have these, and somehow I have two sets of them, and I'm only displaying them until, I'm only displaying the two sets, I should say, until I get something to replace the second set. I just didn't want an empty slot there. Uh, then these, man. These, this is what started the collection for me and my pride and joy here. This is a set of Paul Bostaff Slayer Vader sticks here. Paul was my favorite drummer. He only was overtaken recently. I'll get, I'll get to that in a sec. But um, Paul was my favorite drummer for so long. Slayer's 1994 Divine Intervention album just blew my mind. 
So then we got to tour with Slayer in 2001, and I got to meet and hang out with Paul every day, and he gave me these sticks. So I'm super stoked on those. And then the OG, a Dave Lombardo Promark. I'm pretty sure I got this. I want to say, I don't know, maybe like 06 or something like that when we were playing a festival, I think in Austria with Slayer. It was a, an amazing show. So many good stories from that show, actually. Uh, I could tell sometime. But uh, yeah, Lombardo tore it up. If I'm wrong about that tour and that date, somebody might be like, Lombardo wasn't in the band. And that was one of the period he was out. It was somewhere around there. All right. Uh, Kevin Talley, another uh, Easton Ahead here uh, from his time with SFU with us in 2011. So a six feet under Kevin Talley stick. I don't have any Kevin Talley Camaro ones, which is disappointing, but uh, I got this one. These are some Austin... Diamond, Diamond, sorry, I always get that wrong, even though he's my boy. I should never get that wrong. Diamond Joy uh, from our Elite Recording Sessions. So these would have been the mid 2000 teens here. Keep it G Elite, Gangster Elite, Elite. It's one of his sayings. Uh, this is my buddy Eric Schultek uh, in Defilade Custom Sticks here. He's currently playing with a band called Casket Robbery, but good guy. You've, you've seen him maybe in some videos along with me, even on his channel. He's responsible for all those uh, Sky Vodka Camira custom bottles that we did in 2017. So great guy, great drummer. Happy to have his sticks there. And then another set of Austin's, his signature F and Austin style name there uh, when he was with Camira. And these are from Camira Christmas. 15, which was in 2017. So, custom Promark F and R style sticks there. Definitely cool. So, I'm proud of this collection here. I hope to add more to it. And get myself a Vinnie Paul. Oh, when I said that Paul Bostaff is no longer my favorite drummer, it's because Lars just overtook him for me. And not that Lars has done anything spectacular like recently, but just I realize uh, over the years how great Lars is and he gets so much heat, but you know, the writing, all the albums one through five for me, Kill Em All, through the Black Album, the writing, the power. I just, I, I love his attitude and, and, you know, he made Metallica, my favorite band. So he, I realize now in my later years, is my favorite drummer of all time and probably will be. Igor, Sepul Igor from Sepultura, man. And, but the new guy, Eloy, man, he's awesome too. Anyways, we talk drummers another time. Or maybe I already have, I don't know. Anyway, see you back over there. Okay, so I want to show you one more thing here. My gear list. Look at this. If you go to robarnoldworld.com, first thing you'll see here is check out the gear I use and love. And um, let's check that out. So it just takes you to another page here where this is a link. These are affiliate links uh, and purchases made greatly help my channel at no additional cost to you. If you click up in here, this takes you to Sweetwater and you can see my gear list. Let's just look at that. You know, so I got a list of all the a lot, all the guitars that I've reviewed and ones that I love, all the stuff that I use. There's those DR high beams, although that's not the custom set. But if you were to you know order and get in touch with them, either calling their their numbers everywhere all over the website. Here's that blue blue steel set. Um, you know, pickups I like, pedals I like, cabs, all the polishing tools, the Music Nomad. If you guys have heard me talk about that, this is a sick uh, guitar maintenance tool for cleaning up. Uh, all sorts of other cool stuff, the stands I like, stuff I'm using to record this video right now, like these uh, this Rode Wireless Go mic here I'm a big fan of, accessories you need for that. A lot of people ask how this sticks to my shirt. This is a magnetic clip. So anyways, this is just a big list of the stuff that I like that you can get direct from Sweetwater. And a lot of those are also listed here in Amazon links. So this helps people more worldwide or if you just prefer Amazon. And uh, that drumstick holder uh, will be in here as well. If you feel like uh, checking on that, uh, it's going to be in, um, I don't know, maybe recording studio related gear. Um, it'll be there for you if you want to check that out. But uh, anyways, like I said, anything you, you pick up from here just helps out the channel at no additional cost to you. And the benefit of it is, uh, you know, if you're interested in what I'm using and what gear I like, you can find it right there. So uh, that is going to wrap up this episode. Really appreciate everybody watching. 
Um, for a couple other things you could do to support the channel, if you're interested, is check out my Patreon campaign to see the videos early, get your name listed in the videos, see behind the scenes content, and so much more. Thank you so much to all my current Patreon members. You guys are the best. Everybody just watching here, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I hate to say it, there's this new little thing down in the corner there called the Super Thanks, which is just a little way if you want to get a comment featured, you know, you can donate like a buck or two, something like that. Just this new thing that everybody on YouTube here now, uh, every creator has. And so if you weren't aware of that, I'm just pointing out that this is a little super thanks thing. You know, there's just a lot of ways to support and uh, I appreciate it so much. Thanks for watching guys. I got more material on the way. Check out my back catalog of videos for guitar maintenance stuff, playthroughs, more everything you love, guitar unboxings, and so much more. I hope you will. I hope to see you again soon. Cheers.